Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to talk about this. This is a new little accessory from Unify. This is a USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 connected 10GBE adapter. It's bus powered, you don't need any additional power from the connected client system, and it allows you to conveniently add 10 gigabit Ethernet to your existing system without utilizing things like 10 gig. PCIe upgrade cards. Now, for some of you, this is gonna sound pretty groundbreaking. It's gonna sound very new. It's gonna seem like something you've not seen before. The convenience of 10GBE via what is ostensibly a USB connection, USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 to be precise. But for a lot of you, particularly those that have followed this channel, you're not gonna be that excited. Now, why is that? That is because 10GBE to Thunderbolt adapters have existed for a very long time. As far back, I believe, as 2018 or 2019, uh, QNAP rolled out their very first ones, and they've actually moved on to their second generation of adapters like this one. This one retails for about $249. I think on B&H it's $249. And this is a USB 4 to 10GBE adapter, just like this one. Now, Today's video is of course going to be a review. I'm going to be reviewing Unify's adapter, but we're also going to talk about whether this is a bit late to the party. Should you buy this? Should you wait out for something better? What exactly is Unify rocking out with this adapter that isn't already available from the status quo? Now, before we dig into the necessity of this, let's knock a few quick things out the gate. Number one, I was fully able to saturate a 10 GBE connection with this. I connected it to a uh, SSD U Green NAS. I put it via a 10G switch, connected it to my Windows 11 laptop that was running on a Gen 4 M2 NVMe, and I was able to to fully saturate 10 GBE super easily. When I dug into the architecture in the background of this drive and went into some of the system information, I found out it's running on an AQC 113C driver, uh, sorry, controller inside and the accompanying driver that I already had on my laptop there. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that controller later on, but that does mean it's one of the more modern releases, 2023, I believe, released uh, Thunderbolt to USB adapters in the market for 10 GBE. There's a few out there, but the reason people are going toward this one is it's pretty power efficient. I believe that's six watt peak power. Equally, it's worth highlighting that this works in a USB 4 environment and a Thunderbolt 4 environment and a Thunderbolt 3 environment, but you can't use it on bog standard USB 3.2 Gen 1 or Gen 2. That's 5 gig and 10 gig USB there. Now, the reason I bring that up is because this is knocking out at about $200 right now. And this, at $200, is sort of in the middle of the price pack. We're quite used to a lot of Unify products rocking out, weirdly being cheaper than a lot of the product alternatives in the market. But this one has sort of arrived bang in the middle. Now, there are Thunderbolt 3 to 10 GBE adapters in the market, and again from lesser known brands that you can pick up for about $159 to about $200 to $250. There's also premium alternatives like the QNAP one I've mentioned and ones like this one, a previous recommendation. This is from Sonnet. This is the Sonnet Solo 10G. Again, a 10 GBE connection to a Thunderbolt 3 connection there. And some of these can go as high as $250, even close to $300 there. So the price tank is down there on the middle. But the reason I'm focusing on the price is if 10 GBE is a bit much for you, like you don't need 10 GB and you're not thinking about future proofing, alternatives we've talked about on the market are ones like this one here and this one here. This is from StarTech. This is a USB to 2.5 gig adapter. You can get this for about 20 quid, about 20 to 30 dollars. This one on the other hand is the Wise PDS and the Wise PDS has got a USB-C connection going out here, there into five gigabit ethernet, half of that, sure, but this is only $30, and it works on Thunderbolt, it works on Thunderbolt 4, it works on USB 4, but it also works on standard USB 3 there. There's a huge amount of flexibility. So if you are someone that was trying to scale up your network connectivity, it's worth highlighting that what you're paying extra for here for that additional five gig on top of that little 30 quid adapter there 
you've got to work out whether you really, really need it because this will do a great job. It will give you a consistent performance. And when we did do sustained testing on this, the highest it got in terms of temperature was only around 44 degrees. And that was with sustained use. Now compare that against the QNAP adapter that in idle was hitting 43 to 44 degrees and got close to 50 at peak. The Sonic one went even higher than that. So it is a very well put together device. It's also silent. It's also smaller and lighter than the other adapters that I've talked about on the table. But nevertheless, that price point is going to bug some users. But circling back to some of those older adapters that I talked about there, remember we're talking about a unified 2025 released product when alternatives have been in the market for more than five years. So what exactly is going on with this arriving so late and what does it benefit from? Well, one of the main, main, main benefits is to do with that controller I mentioned earlier on. You know, the AQC113 that I mentioned? Well, most other adapters, with the exception, by the way, of that QNAP one that was released a few months ago, we've done a review, link below, blah, blah. Nearly all of them arrive with a different controller, the AQN107 or the AQC107. It sort of changes name in some places. Now, that is the first generation of Thunderbolt to 10 GBE connection. That was the one that only works, by the way, with Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4. It's very hit and miss with USB 4. Now, the reason for that is, alongside it being obviously their first developed controller compared with the later generation controller from AQ Action or Aquantia, um, it's because of the lane distribution. Now, I'm not going to bore all of you with it, but long story short, inside any computer, the CPU and the motherboard, uh, the chipset, if you will, because that's what, what kind of the layout of everything inside, has a certain number of lanes that are allocated to the rest of the system. The speed of individual, individual lanes is called the gen or PCIe gen, and the speeds allocated to each of them multiply the performance. So that's really some basic caveman understanding of computers. Now, early adapters like these with that um, Aquantia controller, the AQ, the, uh, the 107, let's make it easier to understand, that was limited to Gen 3 times 4. Now, Gen 3 times 4 is a huge amount of performance, by the way. It's 4 gigabit per second, um, oh, sorry, gigabytes per second, or 40 gigabit, so more than enough performance for the 10GBE. But where that becomes problematic is when you were trying to use it on laptops, PCs, MacBooks, or whatever, that didn't assign enough lanes to the Thunderbolt connection you were connecting it to. And it can often lead to a system that if you did use some of the first generation uh, Thunderbolt 3 to 10 GB adapters, when you try to use them outside of Thunderbolt 3 connections, when Thunderbolt 4 came along, late Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4, where PC and um, hardware manufacturers have actually played with the lane distribution, you could use one of these adapters, and because the lanes on the host system hadn't been allocated enough, you would never get the 10G performance. Which is where that new controller inside this makes the difference. Now the 113 can be assigned at Gen 3 or Gen 4 at times 1, times 2 or times 4 speed. Now. The reason for that is, and that's more on the client side that it's important, is it means it is more flexible to the device you're deploying it on. And unlike some devices that would have deployed this adapter that was made specifically for Thunderbolt 3, and you try to use it in Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4, and you would get wildly, un um, wildly unstable results depending on one client system or another, this can be more flexible and stretch its muscles out from Gen 3 into Gen 4, which by the way doubles the speed, from one gigabyte per second to two gigabytes per second. But on top of that, changing the speed from times one, times two, times four, which then times that number out there in terms of the bandwidth afforded to you. Again, some of what I'm saying here, I've had to dumb down, but the long story short is, the reason these new adapters exist is because these are more fluid and flexible to existing Thunderbolt 3, but more over Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 systems. And now as we move into the generation of Thunderbolt 5 devices, that flexibility is going to be paramount because hardware manufacturers that are designing a lot of these computers are needing to be very careful and tactical about the lane distribution inside and old style adapters are not built for that flexibility in the way new ones are.
Now, ultimately, if you need to add 10 GBE to your USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 system, and even Thunderbolt 5 systems, I would definitely recommend this adapter. Because although it seems more expensive than some of the cheaper Thunderbolt 3 older devices in the market, as we've explained, the flexibility it affords to you long term as you change different client PC and Mac systems over time will make it more worthwhile there. And again, compare it to other Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 devices right now, like that keynote one this one works out a lot cheaper by 50 or even as high as 100 so that's quite good to know but do know that you are paying extra for flexibility that you may never know that you needed in the first place and it may have turned out that you could have gone ahead with a thunderbolt 3 dedicated one or even if you don't have a thunderbolt 3 Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 port that you could have just simply gone for that $30 adapter. Again, all of that is linked in the description below, blah, blah, blah. But I will also highlight that as much as I like this, I'm surprised it's fanless. I'm surprised it doesn't have any form of ridged heat dissipation for the air. Now, the reason I bring that up is I've tested this on aggregate for about seven hours over the course of two days and it worked like a charm for me. However, that's not a huge period of time in the grand scheme of things. These adapters I've actually used for a great deal longer. And the QNET one, for example, it has a huge heat sink inside and airflow with vents built into it there. And if we look at the um, Sonic one here, the whole thing is a giant heat sink and it's ridged to help air carry throughout the metal casing, allowing dissipation there all the way through. This, on the other hand, is a solid metal mass. Now that's not in itself a bad thing, but just keep in mind that when air is flowing over this, that flat surface, the reason a lot of brands use ridged materials is it allows the air to be captured in each of those individual ridges a great deal easier. And again, with all the power coming through that USB port there on the back, there's no real limit to how much power it's going to draw because USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 actually supply more than enough power for this. So the heat that it may generate from that controller for me, I just wish the chassis was ridged or even that it was a fan on there that we could turn on and off. It's a small complaint in the grand scheme of things for an adapter that definitely, definitely, definitely does the job that Unify say it will. But just know that it isn't the only gig in town and unless you are wedded to Unify, take the extra minute to look at other alternatives in the market. Again, I've linked to them in the description below. If you use those links, and please only use those links if you found the video helpful, a small commission will come to me and Eddie here at NAS Compares. It allows us to keep doing what we do. Now, I'm probably going to do a follow-up video on this because I'm looking forward to tearing this apart, but I wanted to finish the review before I did so. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Maybe you've had experience with Thunderbolt 2 10GB adapters. I'd love to hear from you. But Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.